In, in our discussion and, and many people that I talk to kind of go back to inflammation as a, as a root cause of, of a lot of problems. Absolutely. Explain what that is. I mean, uh, people can know so, in certain, you know, joint is inflamed from an injury or whatever, but inside so, the body. So our immune cells um, will go in and they will uh, perceive uh, when there's been damage. If it has the damage been uh, because of an, of an infecting organism, they will come in, dissolve the damaged tissue, and they have receptors to identify the organism and will come uh, attack a foreign organism. If the damage has been because of uh, a burn or physical trauma, again, they will come in, identify the damaged tissue, dissolve the tissue, and then they will come in and they will help you rebuild and repair those damaged tissues. So it's a, necess it's a very important part of protecting us, uh, of repairing us uh, from damage. We can see evidence of that. If uh, you have increased blood flow, things will get red and get warm. Uh, if this is from an infection, there's an invading organism doing that. If it's from uh, trauma, um, uh, a, a burn, again, uh, we're coming in uh, to repair the damage, but it's not due to an infecting organism. So it's, it's not pathologic. It, it, it's anticipated when it be, is beginning to occur when there has been no infection, no trauma, no damage, now it's only destructive. It's not reparative. Why does that happen? Uh, and, and we're slowly beginning to tease that out. Uh, an important concept here is something called molecular mimicry. That my, my immune cells have come in, they'll say to the structures of my joint, and they're attacking it. They're attacking it because it looks, that structure has been altered um, uh, because of, uh, uh, pollution or a, a side chain that got damaged to it, uh, a sugar side chain or a lead or a cadmium side chain or some uh, uh, aerosolized uh, pollution uh, it, that damaged that protein. Or the protein looks like a uh, microbial protein that I have gotten sensitized to, uh, Lyme's bacteria, for example. But now that structure has a similar amino acid sequence to my structures. So my, my, and many microbes have adopted um, or developed amino acid sequences similar to some of our own internal structures as a way of evading our immune cells. And when we finally get um, so that we can mount a defense against that microbe, again, depending on your genetics, I may be also attacking my joints, or in my case, my brain, or you know, if your skin, or for psoriasis. So how does diet, if you do it right, reverse that? Re yeah, what, what is diet doing So well, let's talk about the proteins uh, gluten and the protein casein. For some individuals, as my body digests those proteins, they will make structures that look similar to structures in my brain. Now, if I'm eating that gluten or that casein as it gets uh, digested, my body has now gotten sensitized to gluten, dairy, and my brain. If I eliminate gluten and dairy, I'm not attacking the gluten and dairy, and I'm not attacking my brain. So this is, a, this is how that interplay between the genetics that I have and how some of these food proteins that have uh, uh, amino acid sequences similar to various structures in our bodies. So really a lot of people, if they have conditions, might want to get tested for sensitivities, right? Because they could have them and not know. Well, um, if you have a uh, autoimmune condition, uh, my, my, my recommendation is take gluten, dairy, and eggs out, because those are the three most common food sensitivities, okay. and see what kind of benefit you have there. Uh, and if that's not sufficient, then we may, there, there may be reasons to investigate further.